Welcome into another edition of the PHNX D Backs podcast right here on PHNX. Let that play, Damon. Let it play. Uh, of course, my name is Derek Matia, occasionally known as Tu Hermano uh, and your mayor of PHNX, Derek Montia. Uh, I'm also joined by the one and only Damon Dog. And of course, we will have Jesse Friedman, my vice mayor, your Thunderstick, joining us shortly. Big win for the Arizona Diamondbacks tonight. Obviously, uh, it's the New York Yankees, so it's always a big win. But the Diamondbacks shut out the Yankees tonight and win the game 7 to nothing. Zach Gallen was outstanding. Uh, he did everything that Torrey Lavello needed out of him. Uh, and after we look at some of his uh, pitches thrown tonight, I think there will be a little less concern about what we saw on opening day. Of course, you give Zach Gallen a lead and he'll lock it down, and the Diamondbacks did that. Once again, of course, before we get into that, I do want to let you guys know uh, that this show is presented to you by Factor Meal Kits. My entire day has been presented by Factor Meal Kits, two Factor Meal Kits today, uh, and one of those uh, specialty immunity boost drinks that they sent me. So uh, I'm, take, I'm taken care of today for once. You can head to factormeals.com slash phnxdbacks50, and if you enter code phnxdbacks50, you will get 50% off your order. Of course, like I said, another big first inning for the Arizona Diamondbacks uh, gave the Snakes an early lead, and it was enough uh, for them to win this one, considering that Zach Gallant and the bullpen ended up holding the Yankees scoreless. Uh, but the three runs tonight, again, uh, the Diamondbacks have been very good early, very good early. Tonight was a bit more encouraging as far as them kind of you know, uh, spreading it around. And yes, Corbin Barrels, you're absolutely right. This one was for Sean DePaz, a ski to Sean DePaz. And of course, we'll, we we actually do have some Sean DePaz information to discuss. We do have to discuss adding Scott McGuff to his international sex symbol list, but that we'll handle here later because of course, right now we want to talk about the offense, which has just been outstanding for this team. It's got to be very good for the starting pitchers to get, you know, get, to get this back up early from this offense. Again, like I said, the three runs tonight uh, gives the Diamondbacks 12 first inning runs in six games. So they have done an excellent job at striking early and, of course, giving uh, giving their starting pitcher that that cushion. Cattell Marte was one for five tonight, so probably his worst game, but still led things off uh, with, with a double and scored a run. And Blaze Alexander, meanwhile was absolutely outstanding. Blaze continues to excel right now at a major league level, and it's understandable why Torrey Lavallo continues to trust him. Torrey had Blaze hitting second tonight in the lineup. Uh, I, I I was going to ask if you know what Blaze has done to earn Torrey's trust in this manner, but Torrey was asked like what you know kind of what he. Uh, what what Blaze means to him and what he's shown to him early on, and and this is what Tori had to say in regards to that. Um, the energy, um, the 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 genuine response to everything that goes on around him. He is just such a real human being and so honest and so authentic. Um, I just have appreciated all my interactions with him. You ask him a question, you're gonna get the honest answer. And it's energized. It's coming. Heads up. He's going to knock you over with his answer, and he isn't going to let up. So I just enjoy the way he, he approaches me, which is hard for young players to do. And I try to eliminate that barrier. It's intentional. Um, there's a time point in time during the game where I have to be the manager, but prior to that, I'd like to have conversations with Guy, and he steps right into that arena, and he's, he's got a great personality, and he fits right into this clubhouse. We know Tori loves to have that conversation, right, Damon? We know he loves to look the guys in the eye, especially especially when they're injured. But you know what I mean? Like, Tori likes to judge, you know, a lot of things about his players' reactions to him. And he's right. Blaze is an incredible 
person, right? Like he's a very, you could almost say intense because a lot of people are a bit more stoic with their feelings. Like Blaze very much wears his, wears his emotions on his sleeve. He's, That's he's, why you guys are best friends. The hug, Damon, it was... You're it, still thinking about the hug. It was so... It was Derek, like... Derek Tori loves the said hug. the word authentic, right? Yeah. It was so authentic. That's like, how you feel? We, we as dudes hug each other a lot. You know what I mean, right? Like, we do the weird, bring it in, like, yeah. here, let me keep my arm oh, between yeah. you and me, and I'm going to pat you on the shoulder, kind of. Like, rarely, rarely does one of your brothers or your friends put, like, their head on your shoulder? get out of here that was just it was, it was friends it was wonderful it was emotional and it was great to see it's great to see him show out right blaze has been outstanding he right now uh is hitting 400 with an 855 ops uh and you guys are right carlos in the chat said that uh uh Cattell Marte, he was two for five not one for five because they did change uh that e5 to an infield hit but i mean you just uh, the diamondbacks continue to have these young guys that come up and just add to the excitement of this team. I have these Corbin Carroll bobbleheads here to keep me company because Corbin uh, was not in the lineup tonight. And I'm very sad when we don't have enough Corbin Carroll in our lives. Uh, Tori said there was nothing wrong with Corbin. He's totally fine. And that this was just a scheduled day off. In fact, Tori sounded a bit regretful because he sounds like he kind of blames himself for Alec Thomas's injury now that Alec is on, you know, the 10 day IL because he didn't give Thomas a chance to get off his feet. There's nothing wrong with Corbin, but uh, he's not been doing very well. Obviously, you know, uh, he's been struggling at the plate. He's been walking plenty and he's been patient. But, you know, of course, Tori does want to probably try to give him a moment to reset. I'm sure Corbin hates it. I'm sure Corbin does not want the day off. I felt I was talking to Jacob earlier today. I felt that five games is a little early. It is to make this call. It is. He's but Corbin Carroll. Tory, I mean, at the very least, Tory tends to just kind of have a plan in place like he was going to go with. I, I think this is does go against that. I'm sure that there was not, you know, he probably didn't have Corbin Carroll I taking trust Tory. game six. I trust Tory with my life. In. Well, yeah. It's like it's like I would let I would let Tory manage my every day and oh. I would let Mike Hayes in general manage just my life in general. No he doubt. would make all the acquisitions in my life. Any trades, anytime I went to buy a car, Mike Hazen would go with me to make sure I got the best deal. Like that I would I would trust these men with my life. And Damon would probably say he would give his life for both of these men. Oh, I'd take a bullet for both of them. Exactly. For sure. I knew you would, but I mean, uh again, there's just something fun and exciting about you know, Blaze Alexander adding that to this team. Right now, there's a lot of guys doing well, you know, so like right now, the Diamondbacks don't necessarily need that contribution from Corbin Carroll. It's the thing that makes this team successful is that when one guy is struggling, there are other players on the team to pick him up. And right now, you know, Lourdes Gurriel is just coming off of being the National League Player of the Week. We have Eugenio Suarez, who's hitting 333 with an 851 OPS. Uh, Jake McCarthy hitting 333 himself. And of course, Jerry P, who continues to get on base. What were what were you giving me? Uh, you, I let Damon handle all the Jerry yeah, P so stats. Yeah, so I saw a stat earlier today on uh, on Twitter. I believe it was uh, Jacob sent it to me, and it was like, or he just showed it to me. But I think it was twenty nine swings for uh, Geraldo Perdomo this season, and uh, twenty nine times he's put the bat on the baseball, whether that be a foul ball hit out, whatever. But he has not whiffed on a pitch. I I don't know if he did tonight or not, but it was before tonight. We also had a Zach Gallon home run late, a three run home run, and or not? Did I say Zach Gallon? I'm sorry. That Zach would be Gallen, incredible. That would be amazing. With the, we we know Zach Gallon rules. wanted to get in. He with wanted the, to with get the in. DH rules and Zach Gallon's <laughs> pimping a home uh, run. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, Christian Walker, I'm all over the place. See, this is why I need Jesse here. But uh, I got Jesse Jr., uh, but not the real Jesse. Uh, he'll join us here shortly. But uh, piece of Yoshi, yeah, you're right. Uh, how piece of Yoshi. Piece of Yoshi's back. We were we literally him. talking about you yeah. yesterday after the show going, yeah. where has he been? Where where were you? We missed you. Welcome back. Uh, Christian Walker, two for four, three RBI, that home run. I got to sing the Walker song to Damon uh, quite a few times, so that was electric. But, yes, you're right, piece of Yoshi. I did almost get killed by a foul ball in the press box. Uh, it was from Blaze Alexander, my bestie. Uh, the hugs are meaningless, I guess, when it comes to hitting the ball in my direction. But uh, I will just say this. In order, once again, let me explain this to you. In order for a foul ball to come into the press box, it has to be doing some crazy things because it has to make it with a certain amount of loft 
to get over the net of the backstop, but still to have that trajectory because if it clears the net and it's on that backward trajectory, typically it's going to go up into the 300 section. Some lucky fan up there is going to get a shot at catching a foul ball. Instead, when they come into the press box, they have this ridiculous amount of backspin on them. So when this one came in, I saw it peak and then it stopped going up and I knew I knew it was trouble. That's the moment where I grab my laptop like this and I close it. And then I typically close my eyes really tight and I just kind of do this is what I do, right? Um, and I scream like a girl. But uh, there is something to be said about watching that ball come in because if it comes in cleanly and bounces off of like a wall or the back of one of the TVs that we're watching replays on, everything's good. It'll bounce off. It'll go back down. Again, the lucky fans in Section 100 this time will get a chance at a, at a foul ball. But if it does what this ball did and it comes in and looks like it's going to hit the back of the metal box that the TVs are in, because they are like those outdoor TV kind of things, uh, but doesn't and instead just nicks the corner of it, then it becomes a goddamn ping pong ball in uh, in in the press box, but uh, of the worst variety, a very heavy uh, ping pong ball that could help hurt you very much. Uh, that's when it came in, smashed Jack Summers water, got us all wet, uh, and then bounced off the table, off the wall. We're in the second row, so like that, it came in, goes past the first wall, gets us back here, boom, off the table, off the wall. Then that son of a bitch ball bounces back into the crowd. We don't even get the ball that almost kills us. Again, some lucky fan in section 100 gets to go home with the ball that almost murdered me or Jack Summers. Uh, and again, what a way to go. What a way to go. One time I had a, f I had a dream that a baseball killed my entire family. It was awesome. So uh, it's, the, it's the exact way I plan on, on dying. But uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you to Blaze for providing me with that wonderful opportunity. Uh, of course, none of this, not all of this offense was great, but it really wasn't needed for Zach Gallon in the bullpen. Uh, Gallon struggled with his command early on, but he really got locked in after the first inning. I think at one point, Jesse and I looked at each other at the same moment when Zach Gallon was struggling to the first batter, uh, and we said, oh, no. Uh, but Oh, no, was for a brief moment because that gal really locked in in the second inning. And beyond that, he was outstanding. Uh, his fastball touched 95 or 94 miles per hour with his four seam tonight. Uh, and he threw the absolute entire arsenal. And when I say that, look at how beautiful this 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 chart is here of Zach Gallon's pitch. It's selection. incredible. It's amazing. It's so colorful and bright, and there's just stuff everywhere. Look at that. It's like a Skittles. It is. It's like a package, package. of Skittles. It absolutely is. He threw his, his four seam, the changeup, the slider, the knuckle curve, the sinker, the cutter. Uh, he got three strikeouts with his fastball. He got one with his slider, one with the knuckle curve. I think he got one again um, with his sinker, I want to say. But he was outstanding. Um, his slider looked absolutely outstanding tonight. And, again, it's very encouraging to see Zach Gallen step up after some mild concerns about game one. Like there wasn't an, an emergency by any stretch of the imagination, but based on his velo, based on some things we were seeing, um, he wasn't, he didn't look great, but it was game one after a very short off season and after a very long postseason. And he also had a ton of run support. He had the run support again tonight with those three runs early on. Uh, and he was able to go six innings, allowing only three hits, no runs, uh, three walks, and six strikeouts. So Gallon is back, and because of this night, of course, Zach Gallon is our king snake. Uh, Zach Gallon, of course, the six innings, six strikeouts, three hits, shut out uh, against the Yankees, just absolutely outstanding. Exactly what Torrey Lavallo needed, he said before the game, that he really needed some of their key guys like Gallon, some of their key starters, to give them some, link some length, and, and Zach did that tonight. Yeah, and and that defensive play that I kind of highlighted here in this graphic was such a such a special play for a pitcher, really. I mean, it was a big situation. Uh, there they were shifted over, so Gino wasn't really close to being able to make a play on the ball, and he had to run over across and then throw it off his back foot, and uh, barely got the guy out with some runners on base. And man, Zach Allen was just he was in, unreal tonight after that first inning. Uh, Carlos says in the chat, I mean, wasn't it always a thing we would tell ourselves that he would always settle down by the second or third start? You're right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think that 
There, there are a lot of things about this team that we tell ourselves, right? Like we tried to temper expectations a bit and it looked a little, it was a little nervous after they lost game one, the way they did. I mean, Ryan Nelson did not look good and Ryan Nelson start, I think just exemplified why the Diamondbacks went out and spent $25 million on Jordan Montgomery. Not only was Ryan Nelson not good, but he was he was literally getting hit hard and walking, guys. Like it was it yeah. was a combination he of the two. He it was, no command. It, if he put the ball in the zone, he was getting rocked. And, right. and then he was struggling putting the ball in the zone because he started freaking out. And, and that was a bad performance. And it didn't help that the defense didn't look great behind him. I mean, the offense, they did what they could to try to get them back into it, but like it was just a Bad game all all the way around. Uh, now things look much more promising with Merrill Kelly on the mound in the finale. The Diamondbacks could walk away with this series against the Yankees with the win. Zach Gallen, since 2019, has been very, very good. We all know that. But his 17, he has 17 starts of six uh, shutout innings or more, six-plus strikeouts, and three or fewer hits. And that is tied for second most in the majors. Uh, Blake Snell is number one overall in that category. But... Yeah, Gallon has been great, and the Diamondbacks, uh, we're back. We're back. It's hard to think of that Rocky series. Again, when you talk about things that we were trying to tell ourselves, we try to temper our expectations the way the Diamondbacks beat up on the Rockies. In fact, the Rockies still to this point, after six games, have not scored more runs than the Diamondbacks did in game one. They have still not outscored the Diamondbacks from game one after six games. So the Rockies are just fucking terrible. Sorry to DNVR. You guys already knew that. Um, but did you, did you see the score of their game tonight? What? It was like 10 to nothing? 12 to 2. 12 to 2? What are we doing? Let's just wrap it up. Why does this baseball team need to exist still? Uh, I will say, though, that the Diamondbacks, again, uh, they just shut out the Yankees for the second time in franchise history. That's a very important win. It's an important win because the last time they did it, uh, was in the World Series in 2001. So of course, uh, we 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 want to we want all signs to point to this team getting back to that. Uh, that I'm, that I'm hearing that there's top. another team that we own. We do. We might own. Oh, okay. We might own that. Gotcha. We might own. But uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Caleb Ski Chris Crane says Diamondbacks in three. I don't. Is that how it works? Yeah. Uh, Carlos, no, we don't apologize to Patty Plantains. Patty Plantains chose uh the rocky lifestyle and i'm not gonna apologize for that but i will say thank you very much to all of you guys for being here in the phnx sports youtube channel of course if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet make sure to do so now sign up for notifications that way you don't miss whenever our wonderful shows go live uh drop a like gabby loves it when you drop a like i love it when you drop a like there's like 150 of you in here that means there should be 165 likes i don't know how the math works on that but Again, that's the reason why I need Jesse here. He's the math teacher. I am not. Uh, of course, if you're listening on the audio podcasting side, make sure you're subscribed over there. Uh, leave us a review. We always appreciate those reviews. They actually help us out substantially. And uh, we love that feedback, of course. Uh, also, check out our friends at BetMGM Sportsbook. It is the place for you to have more fun on baseball this season. You can download the app right now on iOS or Android or sign up to, uh, sign up using our code of PHNX. Deposit $10 into your newly created account and bet that amount or more. Uh, on your first wager as standard odds price. Once your wager is settled, if it does not win, you will receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if the bet loses. If the bet does lose, your bonus bets will be available once your initial wager is settled. A great way to get some great betting advice is to go over and check out our guys at PHNX Bets. They'll get you set up, uh, and I tail them quite often. Don't listen to Jacob. Remember yesterday when we said that, like, what was it that that Juan Soto was going to hit a home run? In fact, off of Ryan Nelson, Juan Soto, only guy that didn't do well in that game. I say throw your money Jacob's at Anthony been, Volpe. He's been missing. He does. Yeah, that's why he's he done a home run hitter in every game except for one, and he's missed every single one of them. I'm he's just lost saying, his touch. I'm just saying there is a reason why Jacob doesn't do the PHNX bet show. That's all I'm saying. I'm not dragging him through the mud or saying that there's a reason why he's the fourth best Jacob Franklin in existence. I'm just saying. You might not be very good at betting. You, though, might be very good at betting. So sign up for BetMGM and use the bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through the Sportsbook mobile app for at least $10. You'll receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if the bet loses. Check out the show notes for full details. And now listen to Shane talk about the disclaimer.
Bonus bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non-withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. All right. Well, of course, uh, if you can't make it out of Puerto Rico, uh, visit our friends at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. They can offer a very similar experience, whether that is sitting poolside with a frosty beverage in your hand or playing one of their wonderful casino games indoors. Uh, they offer an authentic and immersive experience. And they Eric, an- uh, we're doing our Cardinals draft party there. We are absolutely and, doing uh, our draft party there. I actually have some bad news. We sold out already. Oh, so I don't know if you're going to be able to make it. Oh, are I you? I don't I know. Like, I don't know if we're going to have a, a spot for you, I man. I feel like you I'm gonna actively make sure, I'm gonna make work sure against me. Good though. See, yeah, I knew it. I fucking knew it. I knew it. I knew that was coming at some point because Damon isn't uh, like he, he, he pushes me to be Ryan's dogs, right? Like I want to be Damon's dogs. I want him to accept me into the pound or the pack or whatever the hell he calls it. But unfortunately, Ryan Thompson talks to me about pro wrestling and you know what I'll say it I bet Ryan would invite me to Gila River Resorts and Casinos because of course their state-of-the-art gaming floor has it all with over 800 slot machines 15 blackjack tables live table games and so much more including Arizona's largest casino sports book of course they also have some wonderful dining options as well so if you're looking for that amazing night out uh, make sure to check out Gila River Resorts and Casinos and let them show you what the next level is all about. You do you at Gila River Resorts and Casin- Casinos. Visit play at Gila.com for more details. Um, yes, uh, Yoshi is back with the uh, it, with the with the Damon on the fire Derek train. No, see, look at he brought me a wonderful beer like you guys asked for. I think Xanax. I I feel weird calling you Xanax lover sixty nine, but. It's what In, I have it's to call you. Name, I don't know but we your have first nothing proper else. name, but you ask where the beer is, and here's the beer. Of course, celebratory beers. When we we were doing, it's not Friday beers yet, but we're doing Friday beers because it feels like a Friday. Tori said it felt like a Saturday just because it's game two, and like that's how his brain works. By the way, it's just like what game are we in two? It must be Saturday or Tuesday. I don't know. It's one of those days, right? Uh, but. Of course, let's take a look at the count presented by our friends at Desert Financial Credit Union, Arizona's number one credit union named by Forbes. This was an ass whooping, folks. Uh, The Diamondbacks won this one in every conceivable way. They struck out less. They walked more. Runners in scoring position, Diamondbacks were 5 for 12. Yankees 0 for 1. Yankees held to just three hits and no runs. Diamondbacks here, seven runs on 12 hits. They just... They cruised in this one in every way. Scott McGuff went out there. He continues to be incredible. Has not allowed a run for this team. Hitless, scoreless outing with two strikeouts. Scott McGuff, local sex symbol, might need to get bumped up to international sex symbol. I am not the man that can make that call. Scott McGuff is is your Jerry P. Like, Like you are to Scott McGuff as I am to Jerry P. Look, all I'm saying is, is that when, when it's Scott McGuff time, it's sexy. It's hot. You turn out the lights. You put on some Teddy Pendergrass. You do whatever you need to do. You light a candle. We like. We used to light candles when Scott McGuff came out. That's how it was. So uh, I will say that Scott McGuff. Again, uh, we we talked about where the Diamondbacks going to get some help in the bullpen, and we know some things haven't gone their way so far. Scott McGuff is one of those underrated guys that, to be honest, you don't really think of because of the injury and also because of his struggles last year when he was attempting to close games for this team and and get those saves. So I will say that Scott McGuff uh, deserves a lot of credit for what he's done for this team already. And let's give it up for tea time, Ryan Thompson, tea time, tea time, tea time. Uh, Again, another inning, uh, scoreless inning pitched, no runs, no hits, uh, 0.00 ERA for Thompson and McGuff. He's so good. He's so good. Ryan Thompson's so good. He's so good. And then we talk about pro wrestling in the in the clubhouse. We got Ryan Thompson for nothing. No, 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 Derek, for nothing. And I walk in. I walk in the clubhouse, and the first thing he says to me is, "Did you see Raw?" 
I haven't watched it yet. And I was like, it's oh my God. It's literally Derek's dream. Oh, I'm like, it, I, like I, Derek, I think I just, died before the World Series last year in a terrible, terrible accident. And none of this is Derek real. Derek used but. to sit down and sketch his preferred, like perfect Arizona mm-hmm. Diamondbacks baseball player. And Ryan Thompson involved. is is like what came oh, out yeah. of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we got tried, Brad he Ziegler tried to rock bottom me. We got Brad Ziegler for nothing. Yeah. I, it, it's it's unbelievable. Mike Hazen strikes again. He strikes again. Yeah. I mean, and and Brian Bryce Jarvis, of course, uh, got another opportunity tonight. Innings pitched. Uh, one inning pitch. No hits. No earned runs. Bullpen. No hits. No nothing for the bullpen. Nothing. Nada. Uh, McGuff got two strikeouts and everything else is just zeros. What an excellent night. What an overall, like, thorough win by this team. Just, again... It's the Yankees, right? Like, that's just laundry. Those are just dudes. Their names are big names. But, like, Giancarlo Stanton sucks right now, right? Like, we and Jesse looked at each other and said, why is this guy hitting so high in their lineup? He's hitting, like, 167, which I know is worse after tonight's game. Uh, The Yankees are not a team to be feared right now, right? So, um, yeah, he's hitting 150 now, by the way. They're not? They're not a team to be feared. They're well, they, absolutely they, before this game, they'd won every single game. I mean, sometimes uh, you play a bad Houston team that wasn't ready to play. I don't have an answer for how they swept Houston in four games. I don't have an answer for a lot of things, but I know that when you come in and can have a night like this, it just once again proves to you, proves to your teammates, proves to that clubhouse that you can do this. You can beat these teams. They're they they're just a team, right? The Yankees, though, they came with a lot of fans to Chase Field, and I can understand that. It kind of bothered me tonight, like walking around Chase Field, the amount of Yankees fans that were there. I, I, it was bad yesterday, I too. Okay, so at one point, I legitimately started to count. I was like, I'm just going to walk around. I'm going to count. I'm going to try to keep count in my head as much as, as best as I can, like how many people I see in Yankees jerseys, how many people I see in Diamondbacks jerseys. There was a small child j- dressed up as a judge. With an Aaron Judge robe. The robe was a robe that a judge would wear, but it was pinstriped with goddamn Aaron Judge's name and number on the back. And then the small child was walking around with a gavel in one hand and a fucking white wig on. A white wig on. I had to respect the shit out of it, Damon, because I don't ever see someone come to a Diamondbacks game dressed up as a full-on snake. Where is that? Where are you people? We need people at least in some sort of body paint dressed up as snake or something. Can we do something? I don't know, but uh, again, the, the showing of opposing fans, uh, you're not going to get that against the Rockies, but... Uh, the Yankees once again proved that we're is, still is that a struggling with that. It's just such a hard costume. It's such a hard costume. You There's get four not- of your buddies. You trust the guy in front. I mean, I don't see what the problem is That's, here. That would be insane. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Uh, I don't know. This is just such a fun team to watch right now, though. And of course, uh, there's a lot of you know a, a lot of tests ahead, right? Uh, we thought that this Yankees series might be tough, and that's nothing because after this series, they go on the road to Atlanta to take on the Braves. So uh, I think at this point, it's very encouraging some of the things that we're going to discuss when Jesse gets here about uh, Jordan Montgomery and, you know, Erod and as far as their availability. Tori also had some very positive things to say about Paul Seawald and, you know, when he's going to be coming back from injury. Uh, what do we got here? Yankees fans are paying for Monty and Erod. That's a great point. That's a great point. And I did say we got to. I love that's such severe amount of copium and I love it. I'm all about it. I, anything that like we can excuse uh, our own behavior is yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, I definitely think that. Uh, yeah, right. Like, that's fine. I, can I, I just say that yesterday? That's like the versus dog, by the way. That's my opinion on the versus dog. Like, what are we doing? Let's let they're, they're still paying us for it. Right. I mean, yeah, whatever. Yesterday, I was walking around Chase Field saying, like, talking to my friend, but saying it as loud as anyone could possibly hear me. If you are from Arizona and you are a Yankees fan, like, you are a loser. I'm, I just, I just mm, walking around saying it to everybody. Yeah. As everybody yeah. that would listen to me. Yeah. I, CBS makes a great point. Atlanta just lost to the White Sox today, who are also not a real baseball team. So, yeah, that's, that happens every once in a while. Um, I, I, I want to cover one thing. Real fast, by the way, speaking of the stadium, and I I was not lying what I tweeted out a little while ago. I did, in fact, walk around every single level of that ballpark 
looking for those smash burgers that they said were going to be new this year. <laughs> Eventually, I was directed to Bat Flip Burgers, which is on level 100. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to depress you. They are not there. They do not have the burgers. The, if you're not aware, they claimed that they were going to have a classic smash burger, a green chili uh, queso smash burger, both of which I had and both of which were delicious at like the Chase Field What's New event that they held. The third burger was a truffle grilled cheese burger. A truffle grilled cheese burger. You do not tell Derek Montilla that you are going to have a truffle grilled cheese burger available in your stadium and 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 not and not answer that call, right? You don't you don't you don't do that to me. Uh, and I'm going to tell you much to my chagrin, much to your chagrin. They don't have that fucking burger at that stand. They have tenders, they have a double cheeseburger, they have everything that they always had there when it was a red hot before. They do not have that burger. So uh, I have alerted the authorities. I've alerted people at Diamondbacks. Uh, I told everybody that I could because I want to make sure that this gets rectified as soon as possible. According to sources, they said that those burgers aren't going to be available until next season. I can't, I'm not responsible for what I do if that's the case, but I will not wait till next season for those smash burgers. Uh, another man that I refuse to wait for at all in any way is Jesse Friedman. Uh, and I demand that he's here. So Damon, can we make that happen right now? Boom, make him here. There he is. That's the guy you're looking. Dark tonight. They're shutting the lights on you early, aren't they? Yeah. You know, I have a, I have a light here. Uh, courtesy of one Damon dog, but oh. I'm, I'm not so confident it brightens me up quite as much as Damon, as Damon dog might have thought it did. Uh, so here we it are. It works here for are, me Derek. perfect. I don't know what's going on here, Jesse. I mean, when you're sitting in a pitch black room, a small light can only do so much. Is it much, very but... dim right now? Did you charge it? It, it does It does feel pretty dim. I didn't charge it. it Remember it, when I told you you got to be religious about charging episode, it before every episode? He did tell you that. I, I was scolded under you the and knew you weren't going to. Either, either it was charged and it would be bright and working, or if it wasn't charged, it simply would not turn on. I wasn't aware that there was this like in between. But uh, anyway, the Diamondbacks beat the Yankees, so <laughs> how are you guys doing? We are doing fantastic. We are doing excellent. And, of course, we talked about all of this wonderfulness that happened tonight. It was just a very thorough win. Uh, all the way around the offense exploded they didn't even need the the offense to show up late but you know that was one of our concerns was that the Diamondbacks haven't really been able to produce runs late Christian Walker answered the call with that three home run uh three run dinger late in the game that kind of just basically put it away but what they'd already done up to that point was enough for Zach Gallon in the bullpen yeah Zach Gallon was really good today and and it was it did not look good out of the gate for him, right? We watched those those first few at bats. I know you were still at the, still here at the stadium at that point, and he just like couldn't throw a strike. Like he yeah. could not command his fastball yeah. out of the gate today. I think eleven of his first seventeen pitches in this game were out of the strike zone. A couple of walks early on, and they were all uh, but the it same worked. Spot too. We were watching like all of the pitches kind of yeah. land in the same area as far as fastballs were were concerned. Yeah, it was a lot of it was a lot of uh, of glove side misses for sure. It just seemed like he was kind of pulling it across his body too much. And he did talk about making an in-game adjustment in that regard, uh, kind of trying to angle himself toward uh, toward the plate a little bit more than than he had been. So apparently that worked. Uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily pretty at at various times throughout the outing. There, you know, there were three walks in this game, and I want to say all of them were four pitch walks or at least close to it. But the Yankees just really could not square up Zach Gallon in this game at all. And I know there wasn't a ton of swing and miss. There were, I think there were just four whiffs in this game for Gallon, which is about as low as you'll ever see in a start from him. But he also had 20 called strikes. Uh, you know, uh, he got a whole bunch of those. I think five of his six strikeouts were via a called third strike in this game. So it, it wasn't necessarily how we're used to seeing it look, but Zach Gallon was very, very effective in this game. We pulled up his uh, chart of his pitches, but I mean, have you ever seen Zach throw six pitches like this and kind of throw them everywhere? Like this, this is a pretty incredible night for Gallon. He really did. I mean, Zach Gallon, you, you see a few sinkers in there. Like Zach Gallon has entered the Merrill Kelly territory where he's just going to throw six pitches, I guess, every game now. Um, 
which we've seen the sinker before, but very rarely. I, I don't know if he's planning on making that a more regular part of his arsenal. But yeah, I mean, you see you see a lot of pitches here kind of roughly where they should be, right? The curveballs are down at the bottom in purple. Uh, the change-ups, I think those ones are maybe a little horizontal today. He, he might like to see those more at the bottom of the zone. Uh, then, then you see where, where they are there, kind of off the outer edge. Uh, but the fastballs, there's a lot of the fastballs up in the zone, sliders, you know, there's a lot of those down and away to, to right-handed hitters. So yeah, it was, I mean, Gallon had every pitch. Gallon had uh, everything going at least to some level in this game. And uh, we talked a lot about his stuff and, and some concerns that I had in that regard. And yeah. His his vertical break on his four seam fastball. I don't know what the average was by the end. We can't track that in game, at least not with Savant. You'd have to like do it by hand. But uh, from the numbers that that I was seeing on the screen during the game, it was consistently better than it was in his last start, which basically just means he had more carry. He had better life on his fastball, significantly so than in his last outing. That was something that I had been a little concerned about coming into this game. That was not at all an issue uh, here in this one for Gallon. Max out at 94 miles per hour. Uh, good on the velo there. It looks like it's it's still uh, on the rise. Yeah, yeah, it did tick up. It did tick up. Um, I don't have it in front of me. I think it was 92.3, something like that for the game, which is still uh, still on the lower end. I mean, last year he averaged 93.6. The year before he averaged 94.1. But you're still at the second start of the season. Pitchers a lot of times won't get to their you know their midseason velocity until a month or two into into the year. So. For him to be in the in the mid ninety two range at this point, I don't really have a ton of concern now about his fastball movement, which is a which is a big development. It was still, as I said, I mean, it, it was still weird at times. Like there there were the four pitch walks, there were the the lapses in command. Yeah, um, but especially Zach to start Gallen, the game. Yeah, especially to start the game. But Zach Gallen is is the kind of guy where he just has enough weapons to confuse hitters that he can go out and and dominate an opposing team even if his command is a little bit shaky at times and that's exactly what we saw today i have to admit uh i i i knew that the diamondbacks would get some contributions from guys that in the bullpen that we didn't really expect to get but scott mcguff has been pretty outstanding uh, out of the pen. We talked about both him and ryan thompson not allowing a run up to this point i know it's a small sample size but McGuff might be that 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 piece that the Diamondbacks kind of needed to add, uh, I guess, if you could say, you know, that that they didn't have towards the the end of last year and in the second half. It very much looks like the, you know, before it was Ryan Thompson, Kevin Ginkle, Paul Seawald. Now with Seawald out, there was the question of what that 789 would look like. And I think we saw the beginnings of it today. It's Scott McGuff in the seventh inning. It's Ryan yeah. Thompson in the eighth inning. And then obviously the D-backs didn't wind up needing Kevin Ginkle in this game, but I'm sure he would have come in to close if this had still been a safe situation in the ninth inning. So yeah, and Scott McGuff has looked good so far. And there was, as we've discussed before, there was a decent portion of last season where Scott McGuff was, was very much lights out for this Diamondbacks team. So Maybe, yeah, I mean, maybe he can kind of rediscover that. And his first season back here uh, in the States with with Arizona was not exactly what he, what he probably would have liked it to be. But, you know, I, I still think he has good stuff and, and yeah. he showed it here in this game. Yeah. I think Derek thinks Scott McGuff looked a little bit more than good. Uh, I, I've requested that we bumped him up from local sex symbol to international sex symbol. But Sean DePaz isn't here to make that call. So sure, that's and, nice and why not? That's it's crazy. Sean DePaz isn't here when we beat the Yankees. Is it not? It's insane. I would think of all nights that Sean would be here in the chat would be a night that the Diamondbacks absolutely destroyed the Yankees. I, I mean, it's probably what just 1 a.m. his time there. I don't know. That doesn't seem too late to join the goddamn show these guys hey, do 24 up. hour podcasts and he's he plays up. fucking bop it all night long you mean to tell me he he's gets playing the show by? right now he's what playing is, the show right now there's no doubt on? in my mind what is going on anyway uh jesse obviously i know that the diamondbacks are still you know looking uh towards the relief that's coming from some of those injured players returning but i mean you know what 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 do, what do they do uh, in Atlanta this Friday with Tommy Henry starting. I mean, do you think that Tommy Henry can still turn it around or is this going to be a situation where Tori Lovello is going to have to turn to his, you know, kind of semi bullpen games? 
I don't know. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I guess maybe when we do post game tomorrow, we can we can dig a little bit more into the into the Brave series. But yeah, on paper, I mean the the pitching matchups don't work out uh, great for the Diamondbacks. I think they're going to get Max Fried. I think they're going to get Chris Sale, um, Charlie Morton. I think they might get in that series as well. That's that's really tough. And the D backs with the way things line up would not have either Zach Gallon or Merrill Kelly pitching in that series. Uh, which, you know, in a few weeks you can, you can get by, I think without Zach Gallen or Merrill Kelly pitching a series and still feel pretty good about it. But for right now, you know, as long as Tommy Henry and Ryan Nelson, two, two more inexper inexperienced guys are in this rotation, uh, guys who obviously struggled in their first starts of the year, you, you don't necessarily feel so good about those guys going against what is probably the best offense in the league. So we'll get into that more tomorrow. I guess the Diamondbacks could skip Tommy Henry on paper. Yeah. Um, with, with the off day on Thursday, they could theoretically skip him and go to Brandon fought on Friday, mm. but I'm not, think they would do that? I'm not really expecting that to happen, but on, on paper, it's something that they could do. Uh, there is, there is one thing I needed to address Jesse, like one factor here that was different in today's game. And I know Ryan Nelson definitely wasn't solid. Um, but, uh, die hard known die hard Elizabeth. She was at yesterday's game, and according to her own admission, uh, she has not seen very many Diamondbacks wins as an adult. So how much do you think Elizabeth attending the game really factored in to this loss? Um, how <laughs> 75%, I, I, 80%, I don't know. I want to see, like, what percentage do you want to blame her for this? Damon, what, what do you think? I think 75 80 is fair. That's fair, right? I mean, yeah, I I, I was telling you that there I go is. to a lot of there I go to is. a lot of D-backs wins. <laughs> I went to yesterday's game and Elizabeth's stink wore off my own magic. Yeah, I mean, it makes me sick. I got the pleasure of hanging out with her beforehand and I just can't believe that she betrayed us by actually going to the baseball game. But uh, of course, now that she's not going to any more games, the Diamondbacks can continue to win. Uh, of course, we do thank you guys all for being here like I said in the PHNX Sports youtube channel uh make sure to stop by circle k by the way on your way to the game you can fill yourself up you can get some snacks you can get yourself some water uh like i said in my tweet things might not be as cheap at chase field anymore but what do you want you want value sodas you want value beers you want jordan montgomery you got to make a choice so uh stop by circle k grab yourself a water bottle and leave it closed and you can bring it into the stadium you can also sign up for the inner circle program for free by downloading the circle k app right now terms and conditions do apply at participating locations, visit circlek.com for details. But if you do, you will save 25 cents off per gallon on your first five Phillips. You also save three cents off per gallon for every Phillip after that. And gas is already expensive. So anytime we can save, it's a good time to do so. And again, it's absolutely free to join the inner circle. You also get a bunch of coupons in the app as well as a buy five, get a six one free on a selection of Circle K products like ice cold drinks, pizza, uh, coffee, all sorts of great stuff. Uh, and while you're there, grab yourself an Arizona lottery lottery ticket. Not only are like the lotto or like the, the Powerball and everything is insane. There's billions of dollars being passed around right now, of course. But Arizona lottery has also introduced their new ticket promotion called Arizona Adventure. And there are three ways to play. Of course, you can buy the Arizona Adventure lottery tickets at your local Circle K or wherever you get your tickets at uh, featuring three iconic landscapes. Get enter tickets online for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. And you can also check in at geolocated adventures at 10 destinations across the state from Flagstaff to Yuma. The Arizona lottery says proceeds from ticket sales support environmental conservation, among other important initiatives across the state. And right now, Arizona lottery is not just about playing games, but it's about uh, giving back to the state and its communities. Visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. We got some pretty encouraging injury updates today, Jesse, from Tori Lavello. At least he sounded encouraged. In fact, uh, well, I mean, I don't know if encouraged is the right word. Tori's up in the middle of the night checking WebMD and Google about these ailments, just like the rest of us are. Uh, and he thought, that things for Paul Seawald were maybe going to look a little worse than they did. Turns out Paul Seawald uh, is already progressing fairly nicely on this injury. He is, yeah. Tori told us today that Seawald threw out to 60 feet today and was asymptomatic, uh, which is big news. Like, if you're a relief pitcher, you don't really have to build up for all that long because you're only going to be throwing, like, one inning, right? It's sure. not like you have to go from one inning and then, you know, 
five days later, pitch two innings and so on and so forth. Uh, so, I mean, I, I don't think that Seawald is going to return in two weeks or anything because of this, but sure. I, I do think that him being asymptomatic at this point and already getting out and, and starting a throwing program, that's significant. I mean, if yeah. that is the case, uh, which it is, that leads me to believe that Paul Seawald is going to beat the two month estimate that we put on this at the beginning. Uh, you know, it's going to be a little while before he throws a bullpen, before he throws off a mound. Those are those are things that he's still going to have to uh, thresholds. He's still going to have to to cross. But uh, but yeah, at this point, absolutely good news for the D backs. Uh, and that's not the only person that he kind of discussed. It sounds like everybody is fairly close. We know Jordan Montgomery. Uh, is going to start here in Reno shortly and should is kind of on pace for to join the Diamondbacks by the end of this month. Yeah, April 19th is the day that Jordan Montgomery gave to make his first Diamondback start. So uh, if he starts on on Sunday, as, as Tori told us, then that would line him up. He would make one more start for the Reno Aces after that one, and then his next start would come with the Diamondbacks. But it is interesting to me because from what Jordan Montgomery told us the other day, it sounds like he was, I mean, he was already at five innings, 75 pitches. Like he was already trying to put himself in a position where he could sign with a team and just immediately be inserted into their starting rotation. Mm -hmm. It seems like he understood that teams weren't really going to want to do that. The D-backs are going to want to go through and, you know, coach him up and, and make sure that he knows their pickoff plays and all that stuff. I think that's part of the the work that he's doing sure. in AAA right now. Sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's not – I mean, that's that's only, uh, what, a couple – a little over two weeks away at this point. So Jordan Montgomery is is uh, is right around the corner. Well, and I, I mean, Torrey has said it a, a lot of times about pitchers, but there's nothing like seeing an actual live hitter. Uh, that's actually competing against you, not just not just on the backfields, not just a simulation game or anything like that. Just a real, actual opposing team and opposing hitter that's trying to, you know, hit 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 the ball you're throwing, right? So, uh, I, I imagine that with Montgomery missing, you know, his spring and all of that, it, it's it's just a matter of getting him in there against some real, you know, real opponents at this point. I, I plus it's it's Reno. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not, it's not going to be easy. It's not like he's going to go out there yeah. and mow down guys. Like it's, it might be difficult, especially if he's, you know, if he's, if he's pitching at home. Can I, can I talk about Zach Allen's defense today? I don't know oh, if you guys have do. already touched on this. No, no, we, we touched on it. Part. I mean, we touched on it because Damon made it part of the thumbnail, but Zach Allen was excellent today. Yeah, I mean, his final out that he got, it was Anthony Rizzo at the plate, right? Uh, mm. You've got, a, I think it was a runner on base. You've got a couple of outs in the inning. Gallon, his pitch count was high enough that that was going to be his last his last hitter. And Anthony Rizzo hits a slow roller up the third baseline with Eugenio Suarez very much playing in the shift. There was no way that Suarez was going to get to that ball. It was all Zach Gallon. And Zach Gallon covered quite a bit of ground in not very much time to get over to that baseball and throw a strike to first base. It was one of the one of the most impressive defensive plays I've seen by anyone, uh, any Diamondbacks player this season. Great, uh, Gallon not only is a Gallon not only is a very good pitcher, but he doesn't get obviously you you don't see pitchers make that many defensive plays. Uh, so I I think it's easy to miss how good or bad guys are defensively at times. But Zach Gallon is very very good at defense, and he showed it right there. Well, we have some more from you in the clubhouse, including uh, Tori, all, uh, Tori giving his overall thoughts on the game. This is what Tori had to say about tonight's victory. That's for another game time. Faces, game faces. Okay. Um, re- this, this was all about Zach Gallon today. He came out, right, and gives us six scoreless um, and gave it three hits and gave us a chance to kind of get our footing. Behind him, we played really good defense. It's no secret. When we, when we pitch well, pick up the baseball, get some timely hitting, um, we're going to put ourselves in a good position to win the baseball game. Um, you know, a bunch of people chipped in with two hits and just had some grinding at bats, um, getting on base, and then Walker clearly had the big blow that, that broke the game open. So um, it, it was a it was a clean game. And those are the types of games that I expect us to play. 
um, but it was all set up by Zach. He just was pounding the zone, looked like he was in command of, of, of you know, more than one pitch and could get to anything at any time and was following a game plan, making adjustments. He and Gabby got into a really good rhythm, but just a good night. So um, want us to enjoy it, get a good night's rest, and, and come out and try and win a series tomorrow. Tori, did you think there was a there, that's that's a big key here because with how badly game one went, the Diamondbacks still absolutely have a tremendous chance to win this series. And with Merrill Kelly on the mound tomorrow, you really couldn't ask for a better guy to get to help you get that series win. So when we asked Zach Gallen about that defensive play mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in that sixth inning, uh, something hilarious transpired. Zach Gallen began telling us that Tori Lovello recently – had told the pitchers what his all pitchers defensive lineup would look like. So like if Tory had to come up with a lineup, guys to play center field, shortstop, second base, all that stuff, but you yeah. only had pitchers, uh, he he revealed to us who who that would be. And Zach Gallen said that he was not so happy that he was put at second base instead of at shortstop. Uh, so Gallon went on a little rant. He wasn't so happy about that. He felt like he was the rightful shortstop because of how good he is defensively. Um, but we, we were lunatics of course, on this team. What is lunatics wrong with on him? This team. He wanted to hit last game. Now he wants to play shortstop this game. God damn it, Zach. Stick to pitching. This organization is full of just like a bunch of just crazy people. They and I insane. love it. And they just love ball. <laughs> they love ball. And they feel so slighted oh by everything. God. Yeah. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you not put me at shortstop? What the hell? <laughs> So, of course, we start asking Gallon once he communicates his frustration that he was not named a shortstop. We're like, well, who's the shortstop? Who's the third? Like, we have to know who all these people are. So, Gallon revealed that Scott McGuff was the shortstop. Hey, was hey, hey, about. Yeah, let's so fucking Scott, go. <laughs> so, Scott McGuff is the shortstop. Ryan Nelson was playing third base. Tommy Henry, first base. Uh, the outfield, if I'm remembering correctly, was Kyle Nelson in center field. So Kyle Nelson apparently can go can wow. go get it. Mad respect. Uh, left field was Joe Mantiply. Right field was Miguel Castro. Uh, I'm no. not remembering no. who he had behind the plate, but I do know that Brandon Fott was on the bench. Merrill Kelly was on the bench. I believe Paul Seawald was on the bench. Well, as well yeah, that's yeah, I'm that's correctly. given. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, Gallon was he he was not too pleased about that. But we we yes, we went over to Tory afterwards and we clarified like, all right, where would Gallon be in the shortstop depth chart? And he said third. He said that Scott McGuff would be the primary shortstop. The Ryan Nelson would be the secondary shortstop. Apparently, Ryan Nelson played shortstop in college, which is something that Tory pointed to. And then Zach Gallon would be in there in third uh, at, at the shortstop position. So yeah, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't happy about it, Derek. And he felt like he proved Tory wrong today with, uh, with that play in the sixth inning. Dios mio. I can't believe, like, I can't believe that they actually have this kind of, um, I guess energy for this kind of thing. Right. I also think that this is obviously because Dre Jameson is injured because he would be your center fielder, right? Dre Jameson is absolutely your center fielder in this whole scenario if he's healthy and strong that's uh, fair he, yeah i think it was just among well, i guess it wouldn't be active players because seawald obviously is hurt too so yeah, yeah right. I, I, don't think, I don't think jameson i don't think jameson was mentioned but you're right that with his athleticism he should be he should be playing one of the main positions for sure piece of piece of yoshi has ginkle catching is that disrespectful Anybody? I don't know i mean i mean catching is i mean that's a brutal job man that's there's like not the a whole lot of defensive position somebody has to do it though right so one reliever has yeah to do it. Somebody and, and he's got in a stocked body yeah. you know like a good blocking yeah. getting the dirt That's put your knees down right and there. yeah yeah You're right well uh, there's not we a lot of catchers out there who are what like six four whatever, <laughs> whatever the is. that doesn't That's exactly right. yeah. have the prototypical catcher build but i'm, I'm with it i'm down uh, elise <laughs> is absolutely right known baseball gm elise says that sounds like a mailbag monday question honestly and it absolutely it is we could dedicate a whole episode to that uh, so be fair jesse there's not a whole lot of pitchers that are built like catchers anywhere across any no. like anywhere in baseball like can you imagine yeah. like five foot ten like 215 pound pitchers <laughs> Like five foot seven, like just human Lin. There you go. Um, yeah, well, we human Lin is not nearly that stocky, but <laughs> <laughs> well, no, not the stocky, not the stocky part. But anyway, the uh, height, well, sure. 
We do have Christian Walker not discussing Zach Gallon playing shortstop, but we do have Christian Walker here discussing uh, the offense's overall confidence in Zach Gallon uh, when he goes out there and, and starts for this team on the mound. This is what he had to say. It's confident in a sense of like, it kind of takes pressure off of us as an offense where it's like, hey, just, you know, let's just get a couple like that. That could be good enough today. And that headspace tends to lead to more runs and better at bats and give yourself a little more grace and, and freedom in the box um, because you trust the other side of the ball so much. Um, and, and that that little edge can can free up an offense big time. You can definitely tell that when this team presses, when this team is really trying to get that big hits at, hit at times, especially when they were going through that stretch in July of last year when they really struggled, that 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 headspace is important, right? That ability for you to not feel like you must you must win the game. You know, it's like to when Tori says you can't hit three home runs and one at bat, right? Like sometimes that's what those guys are out there trying to do. And when you see them having a night like this where the offense gets out ahead early and and Zach Gallon's rolling the way he is, it, it felt like this game was was a wrap earlier than it than it actually was. Yeah, and Christian Walker, I mean, you have to give him credit for for that swing on that that three run homer. That was a pretty good pitch, I thought. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. high and in sinker. It was basically right where uh right where the catcher had set up. And Christian Walker actually doesn't have a great track record against high velocity from right handed pitchers. I was looking at some numbers the other day. It was like a, a 214 batting average. I'm not sure if that was last year or over his career or what it was. Um, but his numbers against Velo, high Velo. Uh, with a righty on the mound or not good, but he turned around that. I think it was a 96 mile an hour fastball sinker uh, up and in relocated right at, right at the edge of the zone. But he was, he was looking for it. I mean, he said that, 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 uh, that particular Yankees reliever has good stuff and uh, he was looking fastball. He got it and and he put a really, really good swing on it. Do we have the probables for this series or I guess for the final game of this series, if we do, um, but we will uh, take a look. Obviously, we know we got uh, Merrill Kelly here going in the finale uh, finale against Carlos Rodon. Uh, the Diamondbacks have have an excellent opportunity here behind Kelly to go out there and win the series. And I mean, it's still the Yankees. It's not, you know, I, I, I don't know what to say. The Yankees came in undefeated into this series. They really put it to the Diamondbacks early. But, you know, overall, this could end up looking very good for the Diamondbacks if, if they can take game three. It really could. I mean, you know, a 5-2 loss yesterday. D-backs come back today and really destroy the Yankees. I mean, 7 to nothing. I know it was it was pretty close throughout most of this one, but the final score was was not close at all. And Carlos Rodon is not not the pitcher that that we see what we saw a couple years ago. I think the the Velo in his first start this year was pretty good, but he didn't pitch deep in that game against the Astros. I think it was four innings, four and a third, something like that. Um, so yeah, this is a big opportunity for the Diamondbacks with Merrill Kelly on the mound. The D-backs have not yet lost a game with either Gallon or Kelly on the mound. Obviously it's just three. Um, but I mean, that's going to be big for them in this stretch of games where you don't have Jordan Montgomery and you don't have Eduardo Rodriguez. You really want to capitalize in these games where Gallon or Kelly is on the mound and certainly feel like the D-backs have, have the upper hand in that pitching matchup again tomorrow. Billy Barton, we thank you so much for your super chats. Billy says Ranger Suarez would be a catcher. Absolutely, he would. Uh, and <laughs> Billy also says uh, the Yankees getting whipped by the D-backs makes me smile. It makes us all smile, pal. We can't, uh, can't say enough about this. Of course, like I said earlier, second time the Diamondbacks in franchise history have shut out the Yankees. Last time they did it, the 2001 World Series. There Good you things. go. Good things. Yeah. The, yeah. the Yankees, something that really stood out to me is the Yankees only had one at bat all night with a runner in scoring position. Yeah. Uh, I think they had they had a back-to-back -back singles at one point in this game, I think in a second or third inning, something like that. And uh, But out, outside of that, they literally did not get a runner to second base throughout, throughout the entirety of this baseball game. And uh, again, that just goes to show how good Zach Gallon was for the, for the Diamondbacks in this one. We had another super chat there, Damon, if you mind throwing it up. Uh, this one came from our guy, Joseph Lassure, uh, and Joseph wants to know, Jesse, are we a wagon again yet? I'd say that I, I'd say, I'd say I, I, I guess so. Right. We're trending in the wagon direction. We're trending being on a roll. 
four and two, the Diamondbacks have outscored their opponents 41 to 19, I believe, <laughs> at this point, which is, you know, we talked a lot over the offseason about run differential and how the D backs, yeah, they won 84 games, but they were also minus 15. So you had to kind yeah. of take it with a with a grain yeah. of salt. Uh obviously there's a very, very long way to go, but that has not been the case so far. Uh, I think if you go based on their run differential, uh the the Pythagorean win loss formula would say the D backs should be five and one instead of four and two. That's how much they've outscored their opponents by uh, here in these first six games. Brett Johnson with the super chat. Uh, thank you so much, Brett. Uh, and I, Brett didn't give us any kind words, but I'm just going to speak on Brett's behalf. Get your ass to the ballpark tomorrow. What are we doing, folks? We can't let these <laughs> people take over our ballpark. This is our year. This isn't their year. Every Brett's year is doing our his year. job. Huh? Brett's doing his Brett's job. Brett's doing his part. Brett Brett is Brett is fully doing his part and I salute you sir and we need more people uh out there doing that of course. Uh Jesse, I know that uh you know uh, we got long we got we got a, a tough stretch here, right? And we don't know what the Diamondbacks are going to do, but it's very encouraging to sit back and kind of say like even if things go wrong we still have we still have Montgomery. We still have Monty coming through. We still have Erod yeah. coming through. And like again, even even if the Diamondbacks kind of have to struggle through those two starts uh, every five days, I still feel like it's going to be a, a short amount of time, and and we're going to see those reinforcements come and really maybe 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 take the danger level of this team up to another level. That's so true. I mean, I think back to to what we saw yesterday and. You know, certainly no offense to to Ryan Nelson. I, I still think he has a chance to to be a good pitcher in this league. But the gap between what we saw from Ryan Nelson yesterday and and either of the either of the two starters that the Diamondbacks have, you know, kind of waiting in the wings, it's it's a really big gap, right? And and yeah. you could probably, I know, Tommy Henry was was more effective last year, had a pretty decent season for the D-backs, but at least his his one start that we've seen this year against the Rockies. You know that that was that was rough. Uh, he he really struggled in that game. Just never really was able to to get in the rhythm. You think about replacing that with you know Jordan Montgomery in the three spot in your rotation. It, it's it's easy to dream on what this Diamondbacks team could become. I mean, we're already seeing the Zach Gallon Merrill Kelly effect. That the kind of feeling that the Diamondbacks just sort of always win when one of those two guys are on the mound. What is it going to be like when when you add two other names to that list? I mean. Maybe Montgomery and Erod aren't aren't quite to their level, but I don't think they're all that far behind either. Uh, Groundhog Mama says we saw a guy with a PHNX fucking dangerous shirt at the game. Was it Tory? Was it Tory? I swear to God, <laughs> I need a picture of Tory in that shirt. Whatever, whenever he is wearing it. But again, Brett, we also thank you. Brett sent another, I think, uh, super chat. Do we miss that one, Damon? No, we didn't. Oh, I called for it. Yes. Uh, he said, not even soft 18-year-old Yankee fans can quiet me. No one can quiet Brett Johnson. We know that for a fact. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, of course. Very, very true. Yeah, I mean, we can hear you all the way across the stadium. Uh, of course, we thank <laughs> you guys that are diehards already for being diehards. Uh, I loved hanging out with so many of you yesterday, especially Elizabeth. But she asked if we want her at the game or not. I, I don't I, know. It's your, it's your call. It's your call, Derek. I didn't respond earlier because... I like Elizabeth. She's a, you know, she's, oh, she's a, a great person. Of the show. She's a she's great person. A she has a Elizabeth. new black alt jersey, Jesse. She's ready to roll. But I don't know. I also love the Arizona Diamond. I don't know. Yeah, I love I love winning. So I'm conflicted. I am conflicted. <laughs> but uh, Elizabeth, I guess do whatever makes you happy. And then, you know, if, if you hurt <laughs> us and the team, then you have to live with that guilt. But uh, I do appreciate you guys that are diehards. If you're not a diehard yet, join the family. You know what you'll get? You'll get me showing up to events to drink beer with you and steal your French fries off of your plate like I did with Cogs and Chris and Karen. Uh, a lot of people, but that's what I do when I come to these events. Of course, you also get actual benefits, uh, like a free t-shirt from the phnxlocker.com, like this bad boy I'm wearing right now. It's Sunday fun day, baby. We're having fun after tonight's win. Uh, and of course, you can get this shirt from the phnxlocker.com. You can get our brand new Defend 
the pool shirt uh, or any of the shirts that we have over at the phnxlocker.com is part of your membership. So sign up today, uh, get your free shirt, get all of the content from Jesse, get access to our Discord lounge, which is the best place to be an Arizona sports fan. Not only do you get to make wonderful friends with all of these great people that we call diehards, but you also get access to some amazing content that is just for diehards only. You also get discounts with our partners, discounts on our events like our upcoming pool party at Chase Field on July 31st. So make sure to join us for that. Of course, Desert Financial, shout out to them for sponsoring our account. And of course, Desert Financial, shout out to them for getting me started on my home ownership journey. If you want to get started on your home ownership journey, look to uh, Desert Schools. Uh, excuse me. That's what they used to be called back in the day. That's what I called it, Jesse. Uh, but I'm an old person. Uh, Desert <laughs> Financial Credit Union uh, for more than 84 years has been Arizona's largest, most trusted local credit union. And they've been dedicated to creating s- exceptional experiences by giving back to the community and providing financial solutions that make your life better. Uh, And that's important. Make sure you bank with a financial institution that has your financial best interests in mind at all times. Uh, When you open a checking account for free right now online, you can get $200 in bonuses. Get started by visiting desertfinancial.com slash 200. Uh, And of course... Um, I'm not going to name names, but, uh, people pester me for OGs and Jesse's going to laugh because he was, you know, <laughs> their president. But, uh, of course, uh, I don't have OGs on me all the time, mostly cause I consume them before, uh, you know, I have a chance to share them with other people. Uh, but if you want to check out the wide variety of OGs brands and everything they have to offer, check out their website uh, at ogsbrands.com. They've launched, of course, they're always launching new products. They have so many different products, no matter what you're looking for. If you are a vegan, they have a vegan gummy right now uh, called OG's Naturals. If you are like me and you love uh, the higher potency, you could check out the big OG's. What's also, not vegan about a regular OG's? What's not vegan about a regular OG's? Oh, that's a great question, Damon. Aren't I'm it? glad you asked that. It's because sometimes the, the gummy material itself can be made with animal you know like there's like there's there, there's there's uh byproducts that make it like the gummy that are made from like animal fat and things like that right so the all natural vegans uh or the all naturals uh they do not have any kind of uh any kind of animal uh anything and involving animal in them i i'm still learning what vegans are because again i'm very old but of course they can't have any animal byproduct that's at all. crazy though the folks over at og is looking out for everybody they they do they do look out for everybody whether uh again whether you're looking for a small dose they have their micro dose they have their sleep edition gummy which can help your sleep get back on track uh and all sorts of wonderful stuff including my favorite pegs raspberry uh, orange rso uh, to learn more about og's gummies and where you can find them Head on over to OGsBrands.com and stop texting me to give them to you for free. You know who you are. Uh, Anyway, Jesse, uh, we have a big game there tomorrow, another uh, afternoon game, and then Diamondbacks are off on Thursday. Uh, Big, big day off. Everybody's off. Uh, Everybody at the, like, nobody wants to work on Thursday because these people are exhausted after this opening week. But, uh, of course, we will be back with a post-game show tomorrow after tomorrow's 1240 start, and then we will be back on Thursday with our 1 p.m. show. Uh, and we have a friend stopping by. Our friend Dalton Feely from John Boy is going to be stopping by. Yes. Uh, he predicted the score uh, in the finale against the Rockies. So we asked that. I, I want to ask him how I'm going to die. Uh, that's all I want to know. Uh, Easton, thank you for your super chat. Easton says the milkman always delivers. Hashtag snakes alive. I still don't know when we're going to get part five of that. I think that part five has been destroyed and that there is no footage left of this at this point. New conspiracy. What happened? New conspiracy. What? They're waiting to release part five until after we win the World Series next That's year. That's such a Bang. long wait. That's like them telling me the Smash Burgers are going to be around until next season. I don't want to wait that long. Damn it. I why would think, why would they wait until this year's don't season listen to him he doesn't make because logical it's sense in the back it's already in the back, oh, in the back. Any he's watched the first six games anyway, this season um i still think it's because someone foolishly cut me with the champagne and the beer bat and my shirt off into the video and now someone saw a final <laughs> cut and was like that guy can't be in there uh but i don't know what's happening with that uh also christopher thank you so much for your super chat he said tonight was likely the last game i'll be able to go to in person for the rest of the season i second that we need more fans in the stands this season this team deserves it be loud for me y'all 
Christopher, thank you so much. We hope you get out to another game. But if it is your last game of the season, we will hold it down for you, sir. And we appreciate your super chat very much. Of course, we appreciate all of you guys being here in the PHNX Sports YouTube channel tonight. As always, you can make sure to follow us on Twitter. I am at cap underscore caveman with a K. Jesse is at Jesse and Friedman. Damon Dog, uh, he is the people's producer, and you can find him at Damon Dog. That's D-A-W-G. We are Damon's dogs. Bark, bark. 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 Can there I just say real quick, Jesse was trying to like ar- argue logically with me right now. Yeah, that's that was crazy. insane. Yeah, that was actually insane. It, I don't know it, what it's he was like. Saying. You haven't been in studio long enough to realize you cannot argue rationally or logically with David. That's insane. But, I, should have, I should have known. You're right. I uh, known. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Oh, see, there's all sorts of people correcting. They see the gelatin is made with bone. That's the animal byproduct. See, you guys are smart. You don't need to explain to me what vegan stuff is. You guys are great. Um, and okay, so that's that's all we got. Of course, uh, I I'm broken at this point. I don't know. I can't wait to see this team come out here tomorrow. Mel, Merrill Kelly, uh, Zuri, you're right. Merrill Kelly masterclass tomorrow. Uh, of course, in the meantime, you can make sure to follow our show again at PHNX underscore D-backs. All roads do lead to at PHNX underscore sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, and I don't know what to do with my hands after we did this to the Yankees. So hopefully we can come out and do it again. Uh, <laughs> Jesse and I will be at a chase field. Uh, I am giving up that search for the smash burgers, but alas, we'll find something else to eat. We thank you guys again so much for stopping by. We appreciate you and your time. Hope you have a wonderful night. And remember, kids, baseball is fun, but it is so much more fun when the milkman delivers. We all silly like the mayor. 